In this video, we're going to go through some common mistakes that get made in drawing resonance structures. And I want to stress there's no shame in making mistakes along your path of learning organic chemistry. It's something that we all do. And if you actually haven't been making these mistakes, if you don't recognize any of these mistakes, this might actually be a bad thing because you haven't been doing enough problems from the textbook or from your course notes. So I'd stress that nothing wrong with making mistakes. I've made every single one of the mistakes that we'll be going through here. And the point of this exercise and these series of exercises is gonna to be to see if you can figure out what's wrong with each of these resonance structures. So what I'd like you to do is press pause, look at the examples I've drawn here and try to figure out if you can figure out what resonance structures, uh, what's wrong with each of these different resonance structures. Okay, so let's go through this one. This top one here, we've got this alkene and it's in supposedly in resonance with this product here. What's different? What's wrong with this one on the right? Why is this not actually a resonance structure? Well, notice that this is not a balanced equation. Okay, so we have a different number of atoms. In fact, this hydrogen here has kind of been added out of nowhere. And remember the resonance, we're only moving electrons. We're only moving electrons. We're not adding or subtracting any atoms. So th this is not a balanced resonance equation. So we, we can't, um, this is not correct. Now what about this? Uh, we could actually make this correct by how. Okay, well we can get, certainly get rid of this, this hydrogen here. Okay, and what would be a valid resonance structure is if we were to say move a pair of electrons over here and that gives us a negative charge. Okay, so what about this resonance form on the left, the resonance form on the right? So what's the problem here? Again, it's not balanced. Why not? Because we've actually, if you count the electrons here, we've got, we could move this pair of electrons down from the nitrogen to form a double bond, like so. And this double bond, we'd move this pair of electrons to this carbon, but we've actually lost a pair of electrons here. We're missing electrons that should be on our carbon. So we should draw in this pair of electrons and a negative charge. So now this is a balanced uh, resonance form. So remember you can't, so your bottom line here is you don't gain or lose electrons or atoms. That's very important when drawing resonance forms. Okay, let's look at another example here. All right, so what's wrong with these resonance structures? Again, you know, it would be good if you press pause, looked at them yourself. When you're ready, press play, we'll go through them. Okay, so let's have a look. There's actually a couple things wrong with this, this resonance structure on the left and the one on the right, uh, what could be the problem? Well, okay, first of all, hopefully you'll see that we've got too many electrons around our nitrogen. There are too many electrons. An exclamation point. Notice we've got 10. That's not legal, can't do that. And the other thing is it's also not balanced. So notice how there's two hydrogens on this side and one on this. So, um, so not balanced with respect to our WRT with respect to atoms. So how could we modify a few things to make this more of a balanced equation? Uh, well, we could do one thing here. Let's, uh, we could, let's say, if we wanted to make this legal, we could either remove a hydrogen or we could remove a lone pair um, to make this legal. So let's, um, let's see, well, let's make it like this. So we've got, this would make it a negative charge on nitrogen. Okay, so now we've got two lone pairs. This would come down and that would make our double bond like so. And then these both would be neutral. So now this would be balanced. Um, so now we've got eight electrons around nitrogen and we've got eight along nitrogen on the right. So, okay, so now that that's okay. 
Now, what's wrong with this one on between the left and the right? Okay, so everything seems to be okay with this oxygen. It's got the right number of electrons, right? We've got a carbocation. Now, what's the problem over here on the right? Well, again, too many electrons. Too many electrons, we've got 10. Bad. So that's actually going to break the octet rule. We cannot do that. So it's important that, you know, it's, it's, it's not balanced, in other words. It's not balanced. We could make this balanced if we got rid of this pair of electrons, let's say here. Okay, actually, maybe we'll just get rid of this. It doesn't really matter. We could get rid of either. Just aesthetic decision. And then we would have to have a plus charge or a positive charge on the oxygen. Then this would be okay. So pair of electrons goes down to there. Actually, let's draw a different color here. So pair of electrons goes down to form a double bond. And this forms our new double bond between carbon and oxygen, positive charge on the oxygen. Okay, so now that works. Good. Okay, let's do another set here. So press pause, look at these resonance forms, see if you can figure out what's the problem. And then we'll, you know, when you press play, we'll go through it. Okay, what is the issue with this resonance form on the left versus this resonance form on the right? Well, notice how we've got an oxygen which has an oxygen hydrogen bond here and then we have an oxygen which is just oxygen bonded to itself you know to, to double bond to carbon in other words we've moved or broken a sigma bond a single bond between oxygen and hydrogen so the problem here is a resonance form we can't break single bonds Only, only pi bonds or double bonds. So this is not this is not a valid valid resonance form. These are actually isomers of each other. If you pay attention to notice how we've moved this hydrogen over to the CH two over here. So these are actually isomers, but not resonance isomers. Okay, um, there's not really any really easy ways to fix this. Um, we could, let's say, we could have made this a negative charge here on this oxygen. And let's say we draw a double bond coming down and another double bond, breaking that double bond and going up. And then that would lead to the... Uh, carbon now would have an extra lone pair where it didn't before. So this would actually be a balanced equation, uh, balanced resonance form. That would be okay. But as drawn before, they're, they're, they, they are um, not resonance isomers or not resonance forms. They were just isomers. Okay. And what's the problem with this resonance form on the left and resonance form on the right? So-called resonance form, let's say. Well, Again, if you draw in the implicit or hidden hydrogens here, look what's happening. And you might even look at the bonds that form and break just to sort of give you a clue at what's happening. So if you call this carbon one, two, three, one, two, three, notice how we've broken a bond between C2 and hydrogen, we formed a bond. Um, oh, my mistake. We've broken a bond between C1 and hydrogen, and we formed a bond between C2 and hydrogen. So in other words, again, we, we've broken single bonds. Um, so this would not be a legal uh, resonance form. Okay, so these are, again, these are isomers, but they're not in resonance with each other. And I don't even really know how to fix this uh, from resonance. So we'll just leave that be. 
So again, you can't break single bonds, only pi bonds. And that's the issue with the, the top example, which we rubbed out, and the bottom example. All right, let's do one more. Okay, so here's the question is, what's wrong with these arrows? So why are these arrows wrong? What's, what's the problem? Okay, so press pause, think it through. Then when you're ready, press play, we'll go through them. Okay, so let's have a look here. We are doing what? What is this arrow telling us to do here? This arrow is telling us that we are going to break this double bond between, let's say, carbon 1 and carbon 2. And we're going to form a new pi bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3. So what would that mean? What would happen here? Well, we would form this. That's what this arrow is telling us to do, it's telling us to break C, C, C1 to C2 and form C2 to C3 pi bond. And what's the problem here? It's this Texas carbon here, right? This five coordinate carbon. So obviously we don't want to break the octet rule. So that's, that's why this arrow is, is not legit. Okay, what's the problem in this resonance form here? Well, it's actually gonna be the same thing, right? We're going to be breaking this carbon-carbon pi bond and we're gonna be forming, if we look at what that would look like, CH2, we'd have to um, have five bonds to carbon in order for this to be legitimate. And of course, that would be 10 electrons. That is not allowed. So this is also illegal. So again, 10, you know, five coordinate carbon, uh, which I'm circling here, uh, 10 electrons. That's bad. So that's not going to work. And actually, it's the same example here. I just drawn a lot of different examples here, haven't I? Of of different ways to to make illegal five coordinate carbon and that would give us O with a single lone pair and uh, well it'd be a positive charge here but this would be five again it breaks the octet rule so this is not not legal okay uh, down here oh well another example of uh, an illegal resonance form because we would we would get nitrogen with a lone pair and two bonds on it okay so 10 electrons and illegal so we can cross that out now this is a weird one um, this next one we have a positive charge and we're trying to show I'm not sure what okay this positive charge arrows okay, so arrows are showing the flow of electrons right and in this arrow here we're trying, it's showing I'm not sure the showing the flow of positive charge like carbocation so arrows are supposed to show the movement of an electron pair And this clearly does not. I mean, we can't move the carbocation. There's no electrons here. There's no, no electrons to move. So in other words, this is not a legal, uh, legal arrow. So we can cross that out. And actually, it's the same thing here. There's actually no electrons at the tail of this arrow on the nitrogen here. There's no lone pair of electrons to move, so that's not legal either. Okay, so that's also bad. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this arrow per se. Uh, that's not, not, not wrong, but this arrow is bad because uh, there's no electrons from this nitrogen. Okay, one last example. 
Okay, so add on one arrow to make each of these resonance forms better or to actually make them work. So I'm telling you right now they're illegal as they're drawn, but you can fix them if you add one extra resonance arrow or a curved arrow. So press pause, work on it yourself when you're ready, press play, we'll go through. Okay, so what's the problem with this first example? Um, well, as drawn, okay, what's it telling us to do? It's telling us that we're forming a double bond between these carbons, and this is bad, right? This is five coordinate. So how could we fix this? How could we make it such that this is actually legal? Well, we should move or break, a, we can't break a single bond, right? That would be against resonance, but we can break a, a double bond. So let's do that. Let's break a double bond, and we're gonna move that up to the oxygen where it's gonna become a lone pair, okay? And so that would actually work. In that case, we would get this, and we would have negative charge. Okay, so that works. Now that's good. Now what's the problem here? Again, these are all gonna be variations of breaking the octet rule. We need to draw an arrow that's gonna fix that. So we could draw in maybe the hydrogens here, that would help. Uh, we, we would have five bonds to carbon, this, this carbon, if we just followed the octet rule, or if we followed this arrow blindly right we'd have that and we'd have a positive charge here so in order to fix that what we need to do is to break this pi bond and become have it become a lone pair so at some point you're going to need to do a move where the pi bond becomes a lone pair that's the only way to make this it's going to be the only way to make this allowed um, so that you're going to have a lone pair on one of your carbons. So let's just draw what that would look like. So that would look like, let's redraw this. If we drew that out, then it would be like this. So lone pair, negative charge, and now we have, we have a hydrogen here, positive charge um, over here, and that works, okay? It's not the most stable resonance form, but at least nothing's breaking the octet rule. Okay, so that's okay now. Uh, this one here, well, again, it's gonna be breaking the octet rule, so we need to add a second arrow, and we should break the pi bond between carbon and nitrogen. That is going to give us this. the lone pair on the nitrogen and positive charge on that carbon. And that is now okay. It was not okay before because we would have we would have had a five coordinate carbon, but now it's okay. All right, and again, breaking the octet rule. So how do we fix that? Um, well, let's, let's add an arrow here. So we're going to break the pi bond and move a pair of electrons to the carbon that would give us this and lone pair. Oh, it's really bad looking lone pair, isn't it? Lone pair, negative charge. Okay, and then it would be a positive charge on the nitrogen. Now this works. We're not breaking the octet rule. Good. And again, this would also create five bonds to this carbon if we just follow the rule blindly. So let's adjust this with one arrow and that would give us this. Okay, and it might help to draw in the implicit hydrogens here just to sort of sort out the fact that we're not gonna be breaking, again, not breaking the octet rule. So it's very important not to break the octet rule. Make sure that you're following, make sure these arrows work out and that you know everything you're doing is gonna work out. Like I, we've made these mistakes before. I've certainly made a lot of these mistakes and you know your TAs or professors have made these mistakes. When they were learning organic chemistry, it's part of the process of learning that you, you make these types of small errors and it's 
not the end of the world. So just keep an eye out for uh, breaking the octet rule. Certainly you want to avoid that. Um, and in, there's many cases where you avoid drawing arrows where you're going to break the octet rule. Avoid drawing arrows where you've got a tail on a positive charge. Um, you also want to make sure you're not moving single bonds around. You're only breaking double bonds or forming double bonds. Um, and you also want to make sure that you keep track of the number of electrons, that it's balanced with respect to the number of electrons. You're not adding or subtracting electrons. And you're not, not adding or subtracting hydrogens either or other atoms. So as long as you keep all those things in mind, then you should be good drawing resonance forms because it's a very important skill with organic chemistry and it's very easy to make mistakes. But with practice, you get better and better until it sort of becomes second nature to you. So good luck.